We'll go ahead and get started. We appreciate everybody coming out this morning. I know this is uh, un- unorthodox, but uh, uh, I'm glad that we can come out and celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Savior, and we can do it together, although it be in a different way. But uh, thankful for each and every one of you. I appreciate everybody coming out and being a part of this service this morning. I know. Um, I know it's early, but we, we thank God for this opportunity. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer before we even get started this morning. And then uh, we'll go into the reading of the scripture. We'll try our best <clears throat> not to keep you too entirely long this morning. But our Father, uh, as we bow in thy presence, God, today, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege, this honor, and this opportunity that you've afforded us uh, to come and gather, God, and assemble ourselves together uh, and celebrate this glorious Resurrection Day. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the hope and the promise that we have of eternal life through our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the hope that we have, uh, Father, for the life that you gave. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you watch over us, that you keep us, that you care for us. We pray, Father, if some would listen, God, or be in our attendance, Lord, uh, that does not know you in the free pardon of sin, I pray before this day should uh, draw nigh to a close that they'd come. Bow and bend in need and receive Jesus precious to their never dying soul. Watch over us, keep us, and care for us. Bless the reading of thy word. Bless the preaching of thy word this morning. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would uh, send a strong unction of the Holy Spirit, God, that we'd be able to speak only that which uh, would be from my, our Master above. Watch over us now. Certainly, God will give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory for all that you do if we ask it in Jesus' name. If you want to read along with us this morning, we'll be in the Gospel of St. John in the 20th chapter. We're going to read uh, <clears throat> about 17 or 18 verses. I know it's a lot of Scripture reading. Uh, is it good? You're fine. I'll wait on you. Gospel, St. John, chapter number 20. St. John, chapter number 20, verse number 1. The scripture reads, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth a stone taken away from the sepulchre. And then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre, and they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and seeth two angels in white, uh, sitting the one at the head and the one at, and, and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou had been born from hence, uh, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabbi Oni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, <coughs> Touch me not, for, yet, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go uh, to my brethren, and say unto them, I send to my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. And we come together this morning in celebration uh, uh, of, you know, a lot of people, they, uh, 
They fasten their eyes upon Good Friday and they fasten their eyes upon the death of our Savior. And we're definitely going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, I'm glad that we can move far beyond the death and we can get to where there is life. And as we look right here, we, we, uh, we come to the place in the Scripture where the Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene now, uh, if we... Uh, you know, this is the first time I've gotten to preach in front of somebody in about a month, so I may preach for a minute or two. But uh, as we get to this place right here, we see where Mary Magdalene and Mary Magdalene in and of herself, uh, the Bible tells us that there was a place where there was a woman who was taken in the act of adultery and she was thrown down at Jesus' feet. And, and the Pharisees had come to a place and they were uh, testing Jesus and they wanted to examine him and they cast this woman down at Jesus' feet and uh, they told Jesus they said the law commands that this woman be stoned and put to death and Jesus the Bible tells us that uh, he knelt down and he began to draw in the sand and uh, the scripture says that when he stood to his feet that he looked amongst the council that had begun to cast accusation against her and they and Jesus stood and he said he that hath no sin uh, cast the first stone and the scripture said that he knelt back down and he began to draw yet again in the sand and the scripture says that they began to depart uh, from the eldest to the youngest and now we can uh, uh, surmise a lot of things but uh, uh, history would tell us that uh, Jesus began to inscribe uh, their own personal sins in the sand and as they began to recognize these things the scripture tells us that they began to part uh, from the eldest to the youngest and uh, Jesus arose to his feet and he looked at the woman in all of her uh, in all of her shame uh, that she had been taken uh, listen uh, and presumptuously so she had been taken she was naked she was in her despise and she was in her shame and Jesus said woman where are those thine accusers and she said I have none and he said neither do I accuse thee go and sin no more and listen this same precious woman Mary Magdalene that was taken and she was full of sin we understand that was no different than you and I but the Bible tells us that she was delivered she was set free and it changed her course of life and uh, listen she was following Jesus with uh, all the passion that she had within herself and listen she run Jesus was the only one who showed her any love who showed her any compassion who treated her with honor and love and respect and they had taken the very precious the most precious thing in her life and they had crucified it and she ran mightily and speedily uh, as soon as the Sabbath was finished and uh, she ran down to the tomb and uh, she was seeking uh, to find her Savior and the Bible said that she ran down early uh, when it was yet dark under the sepulchre or the tomb and the Bible said when it was yet dark and uh, seeth the stone uh, taken away from the sepulchre then she runneth uh, and come to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom uh, Jesus loved. Now the Bible tells us here in verse 3 it says uh, Peter therefore went forth uh, that the other disciple and came to the sepulchre so they ran both together and the upper other disciple did uh, outrun Peter and came first uh, to the sepulchre and the scripture says and he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying uh, yet went he naughty and friends listen I'm glad uh, you know there, there's so many other religions and people in places today they serve and they try their best to worship a dead God but friends you know that's what makes Christianity victorious is we are we are the only denomination that serves a risen Savior our Savior our Messiah our deliverer the plan and the purpose of our redemption is not dead this morning he is alive he is alive he is alive thank God listen that we can have victory 
Uh, the Bible tells us uh, in 1 Corinthians in 15 it said, uh, For in this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. So then shall be brought to pass the saying which is written, uh, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Uh, oh, victory. Uh, listen, uh, uh, hey. Thank God, friends, listen this morning. Uh, uh, listen, because He is victorious. Uh, we are victorious. Uh, uh, we've been buried uh, in baptism in His death, uh, uh, but raised in newness uh, and righteousness uh, uh, through our Savior, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, now the Bible says, uh, and they stooping down and they look and saw the linen clothes lying uh, uh, and went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following Him uh, uh, and went into to the sepulchre uh, and saw the linen clothes uh, uh, and the napkin that was about his head not lined with the linen clothes but wrapped together uh, uh, in a place uh, uh, by itself and according to a uh, uh, Jewish historical custom uh, uh, friends listen a uh, uh, napkin at the supper table uh, uh, when it was folded and put away uh, uh, listen beside the plate uh, uh, it was a sign uh, uh, to those in attendance uh, uh, that he was uh, would return. Uh, uh, friends, listen this morning. Uh, I, I'm glad friends. Uh, hey, I'm glad that we have victory. Uh, uh, that we have hope. Uh, this thing is not over. Uh, friends, listen. Uh, I'm glad that we uh, uh, we are victorious uh, in our Savior Jesus. The Bible says uh, uh, then went in also the other disciple which came the first of the sepulchre and he saw and believed uh, uh, for as yet uh, uh, they knew not, not uh, they knew not the scripture that he must rise again uh, uh, from the dead listen uh, uh, then the disciple went away again into their own home but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping as she wept uh, uh, she stooped down uh, uh, and looked into the sepulchre and seeth two angels in white uh, uh, the one at the head uh, and the other at the feet where the body uh, had, of Jesus had lain and I want to talk about this uh, uh, for just a minute uh, uh, friends listen the Bible tells us uh, uh, that when uh, listen when God had given the instructions for the tabernacle. Uh, uh, listen, he told him, he said, uh, I want you to build a holy place uh, uh, where the table of shoe bread uh, uh, shall be the lampstand and the menorah uh, in the outer court. And he said, then there should be a veil. Uh, uh, listen, and when the, uh, you go in past the veil, uh, he said, there will be the most holy place. Uh, and he said, the most holy place uh, is the place wherein you shall build uh, an ark of the covenant and it shall be overlaid with gold. Uh, uh, listen, and upon the ark of the covenant you shall uh, put a mercy seed uh, uh, and the mercy seed uh, uh, listen he said I want you to put two cherubims one at the head uh, and one at the foot uh, uh, listen and their wings overshadowing uh, and touching and he said uh, once a year uh, uh, listen on the day of atonement he said I want you to take the high priest uh, uh, listen uh, uh, after he has taken uh, uh, and killed uh, uh, listen the sacrificial lamb and the pascal lamb uh, uh, a lamb that is without spirit a, a blemish and without spot uh, who's perfect uh, uh, listen he said when you take that blood uh, and you walk into the most holy place uh, and he said you make that a sacrificial offering uh, and when God shall uh, honor the offering uh, uh, listen the spirit of God the Shekinah glory of God uh, uh, shall come down out of heaven uh, as a fire uh, and consume uh, uh, the sacrifice friends listen uh, uh, in the New Testament we find that word used uh, uh, listen listen uh, uh, which is called the propitiation uh, of the place of mercy. Uh, uh, friends, listen this morning. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, is our place of refuge. Uh, uh, Jesus is our propitiatory sacrifice. Uh, he is our place of mercy. He is our place of righteousness. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, He didn't die for no reason. He died for you. He died for me that we might be uh, victorious. Uh, uh, listen, in this present world, hey, thank God, friends, listen. Uh, uh, hey, the Bible tells us this. Uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews, in the fourth chapter, uh, uh, in the twelfth verse, he said, For the word of God uh, uh, is quick and powerful, sharper uh, uh, than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, uh, uh, joining and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Friends, listen. Hey, the Bible tells us in 
John 1 and 1. I am the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him there is nothing made that is made. Listen, we quote this verse often in the 14th verse of the Gospel of John in the first chapter. He said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth but thank God friends listen that there is a place of mercy amen listen and not only the place of mercy the place of the word of God is where the place of mercy stood listen and he come down just for you and for me on that precious day of atonement on the hey I've often said this as they were celebrating Passover I'm glad that it had to pass through Jesus uh, to pass over us. Amen. Uh, friends, listen. Hey, I'm glad. Uh, hey, uh, listen. Uh, hey, I've often said this. Friends, listen. Jesus is far more than our representative. Uh, he is our substitute. Uh, he stands uh, in our place. Uh, uh, friends, uh, hey, uh, He is the scapegoat uh, in our stead. Uh, and on our behalf, uh, He stood, uh, willingly went to the cross of Calvary, endured of the affliction, the suffering, the shame. Uh, listen, as we read about, uh, uh, and, and we preached on this a couple weeks ago in Hebrews 12, uh, uh, in verse number 1, he said, Wherefore, uh, uh, seeing we are compassed about uh, uh, by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight uh, and the sin uh, uh, which does so easily beset us. He said, Looking unto Jesus, uh, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is forever set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Friends, listen, thank God uh, that we have a place, that we have a place of mercy. Thank God that there's a propitiating place. Uh, listen, for the redeemed children of God. Amen. Uh, listen, and I'm glad that we can sit here and uh, enjoy, uh, listen, the Holy Spirit in the presence of our Savior this morning. Uh, friends, listen, death has no more dominion over Him. It has no more dominion over you. Uh, I'm glad that our children that are sitting with us in the cars and the vehicles this morning, I'm glad uh, that there is a promise, that there is a hope, uh, that if we well, that if we come through the precious blood of Jesus, uh, hey, there is forgiveness, there is hope, there is freedom, there is righteousness, there is joy, and there is peace. Amen. And listen, we don't we don't enjoy those pleasures and things. I, I listen, because we serve a dead Savior, we enjoy those things I, because we serve a risen Savior. Amen. I thank God, friends, listen, I, that there is a place of mercy. I, I thank God that there is a place of righteousness. I, I thank God for our Savior, Jesus. I, I listen, that we can enjoy, I listen, this blessed, blessed privilege. Listen, the Bible says, uh, and he said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. And when they had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. And knew not that it was Jesus. Friends, listen. I'm glad. Oh, thank God. Friends, listen this morning. I'm glad that we have hope. That we have freedom. Listen, I'm glad that he stood in our place even when we didn't recognize him ourselves. Uh, uh, just as Mary Magdalene uh, uh, the most precious uh, uh, person in her entire life uh, uh, she couldn't recognize him uh, uh, but thank God friends listen uh, at a time when Christ was most unrecognizable to me uh, uh, listen that glorious day uh, uh, listen as an 8 year old child uh, at Beulah Baptist Church in Hendersonville, North Carolina uh, uh, friends listen I couldn't find him uh, he was lost to me uh, uh, listen but I'm glad through the presence through the preaching of the gospel. Amen. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, 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 hey, when the presence of the preaching of the gospel came, conviction rose up inside of me. Uh, uh, friends, listen. And I'm glad when conviction rose up inside of me and I felt like I'd lost uh, uh, everything. Uh, I'm glad that I ran uh, hopelessly and feverishly uh, and fell at his feet. Uh, uh, friends, listen. Uh, Peter, the Bible tells us uh, uh, in one place, uh, in one place that Peter 
Peter as he was on the boat and he was on the ship and he was walking with Christ listen he looked out because there was a great storm boisterous winds and waves had begun to rise up and they feared for their lives and the Bible said that Peter looked and he seen a figure walking on the sea listen and he said Lord is it you and he said yay and Peter asked him this request he said Lord bid me that I may come unto thee and he said come listen and Peter come out of the boat one step two three I don't know how many steps he made it but the Bible said that he began to look to the left and to the right and he seen the boisterous winds and waves listen he seen the anguish listen he was overcome overtaken by his listen his distracted eyes had taken him away from Jesus and the Bible said that he began to see well friends listen I want to say this this morning I'm glad friends listen this is the most beautiful demonstration of salvation that is probably pictorially demonstrated in the scripture and the Bible said that Peter that he cried within himself he said Lord save me friends hey I'm going to tell you something I believe Peter in all of his anguish listen and demise and the state and shape he found himself in he didn't have time to lift his hand up the only thing that he had time to do was cry unto the Lord princess and I'm not so sure that Peter even had time to reach up but I'm glad that he reached down amen oh thank God princess and hey I listen I'm glad that he is the initiator he is the pursuer he is the Savior. Hey, the Bible tells us he came uh, to seek and to save that which was lost. He came for no other reason. And he rose for no other reason. Amen. That we could have victory. Thank God that we can celebrate. <laughs> Listen, thank God that we're we're not here mourning this morning. We're not here mourning a death. Listen, we're not mourning and wondering what happened and where he is. Hey, but I'm glad that there's an empty tomb. I'm glad there's a folded napkin. I'm glad that there's angels that stood at the sepulchre. And listen, they came as Mary stuck her head in. Listen, and she came looking and searching and seeking Jesus. And they said, listen, why come you to seek the living among the dead? For he is not here, but he is risen. Thank God, friends, listen. My hope and my victory is not in a death, but my hope in my victory is in a life and that life is the Lord Jesus Christ thank God friends hey God bless each and every one of you for making the effort to come out this morning I know that there's a lot of you that probably couldn't but we'll try and get this to you some way or somehow thank God friends listen hey thank uh, thankfully uh, listen we we don't have to uh, we don't have to be caught up in our demise uh, listen in a world that is full in a world that is absolutely saturated listen with suppression and they they want to push us down they want to harbor us back friends listen there's been listen so much fear listen that's been implemented and escalated within the church house today friends listen we're scared of being sick we're scared of the virus and everything else but I'm glad friends this morning uh, we can put away our fears uh, uh, listen we can relax and uh, listen we can relinquish and we can take uh, satisfaction in the pleasure of knowing uh, hey friends listen I preached this for years amen uh, uh, listen the Bible tells us uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 53 uh, uh, listen it says uh, uh, listen that flesh and blood shall not uh, inherit incorruption listen the only place that I can get where I've been preaching about uh, for the last 20 years listen is to put away the things of this flesh to put away this flesh listen that I may inherit and listen my eternal home that's the only way we're going to get there Amen. this body is not going 
Things going to have to change. A uh, change have to come first. Friends, thank God this morning that we have hope in the victory of our Savior, Jesus. God bless you. We love you. We're going to close in prayer. Our Father, <coughs> we thank you so very much, Lord, for the presence of thy people here this morning. We thank you, Lord, uh, for thy precious Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus. God, that we don't serve a dead Savior, that we don't uh, that we don't worship in vain, but God, we know that we serve a Savior who lives, who died for us, or that we might enjoy the pleasures and the purpose of what you've done. God, I'm glad, Heavenly Father, that you loved us when we were unlovable. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 5, for yet we, when, when we were in our sin, Christ died for the ungodly. Certainly, Lord, we're thankful, we're appreciative this morning for what you've done for us. Lord, let us live a life that would show honor and bring praise and honor and glory unto you. Lord, today it's all about you. God, and we stand here this morning and we lift our hand toward heaven and we just, listen, we don't come this morning with any troubles. We don't come this morning with any trials or cares. God, we just come this morning, this very moment, thanking you, God, for what you've done for us. God, thanking you for what you're going to do. Bless Timber Ridge Church. Bless all, uh, God, who took part in uh, a Lord uh, uh, of every service that's represented all across this land and country today as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Bless, lead, God, and direct today. God, we'll certainly be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory for all that you do. If we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. As Eric said, is he, uh, <clears throat> if anybody here this morning that's tuned into the radio, if you have any offering or anything that you'd like to give, uh, if you would, just honk your horn, raise your hand, do whatever you need to do, and Brother Eric will find his way, or myself, find, a, find uh, our way to you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for coming out this morning.